All right, so we're going to sculpt some terrain. I just did this video, but audio was kind of weird, so I wanted to redo it real quick. Uh, but to do this, we're going to actually use alphas in this one. And we're going to make some alphas real quick in Krita. So it's a 1024 image, 72 resolution, RGB alpha, 16-bit, and um, content, black background as a fill layer. Okay. And so we can create alphas really easy. This is kind of an older technique that um, was taught quite a bit because you had to use ZBrush back in the day or whatever, and you wanted to make sure you could just have some alphas to work with, but you didn't always have height maps available or whatever. And so uh, basically when this goes into Blender, if you're using it as like a stamp or something, it has to be within a circle, uh, something like that, right? To the very extents of the border here. Anyways, um, if you want seamless, you can do that as well by hitting that little icon at the top there. And you can start making a seamless texture if you wanted or a height map. Alphas and height maps, pretty much the same thing. That's why you use 16-bit because otherwise it has stepping issues. And so how you go about doing this is entirely up to you. You can make pretty much anything you want. Like if you want to do like a little triangle, right? That's fine. We're going to go filter, blur, Gaussian blur. We're doing this on a new layer as well. Uh, but you can... You can add a little bit of blur to this every time, uh, destructively. And so you could go to like black over here, hit X, use white. So you can go back and forth between black and white. And so now make that a little bit smaller. You can kind of just eat into this thing a little bit if you needed to. And this actually works pretty good to get um, kind of like a little uh, look of like weathering or um, erosion on terrain and stuff like that. So you could do blur uh the gaussian blur but we're gonna use control f okay so control f and then you can do it a number of times just keep tapping control f you can kind of work this thing out now you're not trying to create like amazing terrain right now that's not the idea you're just trying to create some alphas to work with you just uh so you don't have to hand hand sculpt everything possibly uh, it's really good for like ridges rock faces things like that you see, I'm getting these little cattails with my tablet, but you probably want to take your time a little bit on some of this and make it look a little bit more purposeful, perhaps. But you can go kind of crazy with it and do like little cross sections and uh, do this number maybe a little bit. And then, you know, maybe do that again. But this time, instead, what we'll do is we'll switch to white and kind of go and trace down like this. This oops, that's a big old blot. Um, work it out. So you can make these things super fast like this. Uh, just make sure they're centered as much as possible. And you probably don't want any kind of like little stragglers like down here. A little bit of a straggler. Make sure you blur after you do any strokes. And then um, save it. So Control Shift S. We can save as a uh, PNG file. We'll go to the desktop. We'll save this as just one. And so these things are real fast and easy to make because you keep doing this process over and over. You know, go back and uh, maybe do something like this, perhaps. Maybe you want some cliff rock looking stuff and work it out a little bit. Nothing wrong with that. So you can just create kind of patterns of things that you might find interesting or need to use or whatever. So you can do wood. You can do hard surface stuff. You can make alphas of all kinds of stuff this way. Uh, it works out quite well. I'm just going to save this one because we got it. And we'll see what we can do with it. We're not going to do a completed piece of terrain. It takes a little bit of time still. Like, it's pretty fast, but it's not It's not going to just happen by accident. Uh, it helps to explore. Oh, you see, I didn't like that there. Let's just get rid of that, resave it. Probably should have blurred it, but we'll replace it. Uh, it helps to explore because not every alpha you create is obviously going to be perfect. It's not all going to work exactly the way you think it should. And sometimes doing things a little simpler than you think also goes a long way because you might just want to uh, you know, have some really basic stuff to work with, maybe even something like that, chisel away at it a little bit. Uh, that number, right? So sometimes stuff like that could be useful. Who knows? Uh, but before we get too carried away, you can also use a marker with opacity. Uh, I'm going to set it at full strength. We'll do a new layer. And so you can make like little squares as well. If you want to do like little uh, chunks of rocks and boulders or whatever, cliff faces, things like that. Um, and what you'll see is that, you know, you just use pressure sensitivity on your pin. If you got a pin and uh, you can get this nice, like interesting kind of stuff going. 
Uh, but you go back the other way with it as well and use black in certain areas and just do all kinds of nonsense like this. You'll see how this works out here in a little bit. It's pretty interesting. And generally in Blender, it's hard to sculpt like a huge terrain slice anyways. Uh, you're better off just working like little sections like rocks and kind of making little things. But you see, I can blur that and it's kind of get the idea, like the loose impression that this is going to be like some maybe like stone face or something going on on a cliff. And you can make a number of these things super fast. You just make like little squares almost, almost like little tiles. Um, you could do little circles if you wanted to, but this is great for sculpting the base shapes of what you're trying to create. A lot of the base shapes, the big forms is what you're really going for. Um, and you can use images and stuff to add in like noise and stuff like that. So um, something like that could be quite useful even. And so I'm just going to save that one out real quick. Uh, but you also want to do other things too, like, you know, take your brush super small and then, uh, you know, change it to white. And then you might want to do like um, little veins like this, just like little water runoff areas, perhaps. You might want to do them a little larger sometimes. Kind of start big maybe and go smaller, or you can kind of do this weird like little cross section stuff. Kind of uh, just makes it look more interesting perhaps. Like little cracks and rocks, things like that. Um, that's possible. You could use this uh, as is, but it's usually better to add more detail. Just take your time with it and just kind of add additional little stuff like coming out of it little veins and whatnot this can go a long way simpler is usually better you'd be surprised how far a simple alpha will take you as opposed to doing something like that you could really just you know do like two strokes probably like this or something like that maybe there's all kinds of little stuff like that that works um like little broom shapes like little v's little things like that That'll work out as well. I'll blur that a bit and then just send it off. So uh, you'll see how that works out. Let's go to Blender real quick. We're going to play around with those and just uh, we're going to create a plane. Go into edit mode, right click and subdivide. Hit Shift R to repeat. We're going to take it up a little bit so we have something to sculpt on at least. Okay. And so we're going to lock, we're going to go to sculpt mode first. We're going to lock X and Y so it only goes up and down in the Z axis. This is so you can create a another alpha off of this potentially, or you could import it into game engines a little bit easier, potentially, if you wanted to. And um, so we got it going. This uh, sculpt draw tool, we're gonna go to the tools over here. We're gonna duplicate it. So we have two, so you can consider this like your alpha one. You never have to worry about replacing the original. You can always go change it back to the original now, right? And so once that's done and out of the way, uh, we need to set it up. We need to go to textures up here. We're going to click new, go to area plane. Okay, we could adjust some things if we wanted, but we're going to change it to anchored. Okay, and um, a lot of times you can, you might want to use constant so that it draws that circle around it. Um, but if you don't do that, it's going to fade in and out towards that circle with the, the fall off, right? So the smooth fall off is what we're using. It should be okay for us here. But if, it, if you ever do do that, uh, when you come down here to set up the alpha, under mapping, you'll probably want to set it to clip. Okay, just keep that in mind. Also, this comes in as when we open it, you'll see. We'll open the first one. It comes in as sRGB. It's a little dimmer, usually, generally speaking. Uh, if you set it to non color, it'll be more something like this. Um, personally, I think the sRGB works fine. So I'm going to keep it on that. But it's just something to keep in mind, all right, when you're creating these things. And so we got one alpha loaded. You can duplicate it. Right, and you can go back to the image settings tab and you can open the next one. So you duplicate by hitting that little button, and now you just go through and you can load all these up relatively fast this way if you wanted to. You can also try using uh, an add on called Sculpt Alphas Manager, and that one uh, works out quite well. Which one was that? Four? Okay, let's do five then. And we'll duplicate it. I hope I got them all in the right order. All right, so we should have, um, yeah, uh, five, we should have six. We got, oh, it starts at um, zero, so yeah, we got six. All right, cool. All right, so now that's out of the way. Uh, one thing I didn't actually go over, which I probably should have, is that you can inject um, photographs on top of these things, so you can add a little bit of texture if you wanted to. So if I load up my textures folder here, you'll see I got a bunch of stock photos. Oops, 
let's talk about those here. Yeah. Um, I got a bunch of like nature stuff that I took when I was out walking around and all that fun stuff. But uh, you get an idea that I could use some like rock texture or something like that. And so all I do is just drag that over here and insert as a new layer. I'll start at the top here. I can hit Control Shift uh, U. That'll desaturate it. And uh, it needs to be blurred. Otherwise, we get the little pixels. This causes a lot of noise. So we got to blur Gaussian blur. It. Okay, we're trying to get rid of that. Even though this was an 8-bit image, when you blur it, a lot of times um, it'll kind of dither the whole thing as you blur it, right? Like it just does that number. So you can set this to something like multiply if needed and put it on top of your alpha. And this one's kind of hard to see. But like say something like this, when you multiply it, if you can barely see it, it's probably right. If you can see it, it's probably not right. So you really want to take these things down in value uh, with the opacity here. And I'll just resave this one because I can. Even though I can't tell which one it is. Let's do large icons. That's uh, four. Even the layer says four. That's great. So um, when we go back to Blender, all you got to do is um, if you load up four here, you can just refresh it. Oh, three in this case. Refresh it, and uh, that'll come in like so. So when I pull this out now, you'll see there's like a little bit of noise to it. And um, so that could be quite useful as you're sculpting terrain. Now, it's not going to do all the all these alphas. They're not going to do the work for you, okay? Um, like you can get some nice little ridge stuff going, like that first one there. And so that's nice, but you still really have to go in and just kind of sculpt what you want and what you want to occur. You can use Draw Sharp, turn on pin pressure sensitivity. You can use clay strips. We're going to be using fill, smooth, smooth. You probably want to turn down a little bit. It's usually too strong. So, uh, and now we can also use the alphas and if we need to, the regular sculpt tool. Uh, but generally speaking, we'll get through this uh, by doing this kind of stuff here. You need to kind of look at references of real world terrain. It also helps. You'll notice that a lot of times they have kind of like uh, this effect going on, which is really kind of interesting. Where they're like a big triangle if they were sitting on a flat surface. All right, and you can see, um, oh, are we getting errors? No, we're not getting errors. Okay, thought we were getting errors. We could use a scrape tool. The fill tool has a scrape tool in it, if you didn't know that. If you hold control, it scrapes. So um, a lot of time, real world terrain anyways, it does something like this, where it has um, like a little triangle kind of look to it, and then it just works out in a bunch of different directions. So it's kind of interesting that it does that. Um, but it depends on the type of terrain too, because obviously, uh, some things are, have like a stepping effect. Other things are more billowy. They just kind of like rolling hills and stuff. So you really have to just kind of sculpt what you need and then sculpt alpha or create alphas for what you need as well. Um, there's nothing that says you can't make like billowy effect alphas either. And uh, just a side note here, we're going to do that real quick because uh, it, you can create these in different ways. Like if I use an airbrush, I have noise for my airbrush set by default. If Krita is not going to freeze on me, what's going on here? Why can't I get in my settings? All right. Well, normally I have. <laughs> okay. Why is it froze like that? Is it like it's not frozen, but it's, I can't get in my settings. Hmm. Um, all right. I guess. Uh, oh, maybe because um, I didn't have a brush selected or something. Yeah. I guess I had a br selected brush tool. This is what it was. All right. Anyways, the uh, airbrush here. Let's do it. Let's change it to see how it's noisy. That's the density. So if you ever want a noisy airbrush, that's how you do it. Um, but you could start this way as well, where you start with like an airbrush and maybe I need to reset this, I think. It should be like really low strength. Oh, man, that's not, maybe not the one I want to use. Yeah, we could use that one and turn it. Let's see back up. I like it for the art purposes of being noisy, but like photo editing and stuff. Uh, so you can do things like this as well. You just kind of like airbrush things around, maybe even use the other one, turn that noise up. Uh, and you make like little hills and stuff this way. And you can always cut back into these the same kind of way we were doing before, where we just draw like little lines through them and make little like billowy effects, filter, blur, Gaussian blur. You'll have to get kind of an act going for this. Like, the, it doesn't just do all of the work for you. It's like little weird strokes you might have to make, and it, some of them might have to be, like, very purposeful, where you go through and you just do just the right thing, and then uh, you might work out that shape. So 
something like this, for example. Let's throw the uh, texture on top of it too. Why not? Even though it's a rocky texture, it's just going to add like a bit of noise to it. And so this one I might make a little bit stronger. Creates a little more, like these little white dots will become little points. So you got to be careful with that. And uh, we'll just go ahead and save that one out as um, seven. And it's better to center it. You can see I'm a little off center. It's going to cause a little issues. But uh, So now if I was using that tool, we go back over to the alphas. We're going to duplicate again. We're going to open that seven. And so you can see now we're at uh, six. So this one, as we use it, you can see is more like that. I told you those little dots would come up like so. Uh, you might might want to correct that and tweak it, but um, it's not a big, big deal. Actually, I want that smooth tool a little bit stronger. Let's not get rid of them. So, All right. So, yeah, you can use this in this manner. Maybe you just want to use something kind of basic like that to even start with, like, the terrain in general. Like, maybe you want to – it's not six. Where did seven go? Um, I guess it disappeared for some reason. Blender's weird like that sometimes. It, just, it doesn't always – do what you think it's going to do. Yeah, so you can use these kind of like build up areas as well. You see how like you just kind of lay them one on top of each other, turn down the strength a little bit. You can, you can make it like billowy terrain like that pretty fast and give them kind of a direction. Water runs off in a certain direction and all that fun stuff. So uh, terrain can be fairly directional sometimes, but you can see we can get a lot of interesting results, almost like nothing with alphas. It's really quite fun to do this. Um, and then you mix it up with everything else you've created. And you can see like these ones, like maybe those don't work too well there, but maybe they work good as like little um, kind of like mini little draws or something like that. Or uh, spurs, maybe if you hold on, uh, push them out, they could be like a spur. If you hold control, you could push them in and it'd be like a draw. You can always smooth things back out. If you want to use something like overly large, you can use a fill tool. And you can go ahead and fill it back in at the base, perhaps, and maybe smooth those out. You see, you can get some pretty cool results like that going. It's not a big, big deal. But don't forget to use your standard tools. Uh, create exactly what it is you need. You know, scrape it if you have to. Um, and you'll see how this kind of works out here in a second. This is a lot of fun. Uh, basically, uh, you can make terrain almost by accident sometimes, like randomly, like placing uh, clay strips. This is, you'll see a number of environment artists or people doing uh, scenes or sets or just renders in general. This clay strip tool gets pushed to the max when it comes to creating uh, just little terrains. Like you can do like up close detailed terrain or you could do uh, whatever. You'll see I have some tearing going on. I'm not sure why it's still doing that if it's locked, but it does do that apparently. So uh, you have to smooth it out perhaps. And it's a little bit weird, but it's trying to fold on itself and it doesn't really need to. It might be because we need to set it to front faces only or to pull on thin sections. It'll pull faces from the back and it'll pull it forward. But I think this has more to do with the textures right now. This is less to do with the uh, the thinness of the uh, materials in general. I mean, it might be the texture thinness that's doing it, you know? So just keep that in mind. Most of your tools you'll have to tweak and adjust. And uh, use, you know, draw sharp, turn on pressure sensitivity for the pin, and you can change the fall off uh, to whatever you want. So it can be sharper in this case. That's the default setting. Do you see how it steps around? It's like a little dotted effect. Uh, you can change the spacing down if you wanted or turn input samples up. And uh, that might still exist. So in this case, we drop the uh, spacing. Sometimes input samples helps. And uh, we might turn the strength up, hold control, push it up like so. So we can create ridges and stuff still. Pretty interesting, perhaps. Uh, this isn't super realistic. So it's like a little pool there. It would create a lake or whatever. Probably not what we want. So we can fill up to the base of this as well instead of scraping it. Uh, but sometimes it doesn't do exactly what you want, but it's still pretty good. And so we can do things like that super fast. And then just use draw sharp a little bit overly large. It just creates a really nice quick effect of, you know, water runoff basically. And you can create little big draws, a little big draws. Uh, you can create draws basically, bridges and all kinds of stuff with this thing. We'll try to work some of this back down over here, maybe. You see, very simple kind of sculpting tricks uh, in general. And so, yeah, we, we got something kind of going, I guess. I don't know. Like I said, we're probably not going to finish this whole terrain section. You could spend some real time on it if you really wanted to. Uh, but you can see we can work out the idea of terrain, at least. And that's the main point. 
All right, so let's go ahead and add in those ridges on the first one. Usually a ridge spur type looking brush is useful. Um, the size here won't matter because we're dragging and dropping like that. I'm gonna turn the strength down a little bit. Sometimes being subtle is more. And, uh, but you could potentially like turn it down a little bit more and then use it in uh, other areas as well. Maybe something like that, who knows? Maybe there's a ridge here, maybe it comes out there. Uh, you do want to just be careful of the directions they end up going because it needs to have a realistic look to it. So yeah, use your photo references, look at how terrain actually works. And it's very similar-esque to this anyways. So it's a lot of fun. You get that one alpha alone does a lot of heavy lifting. Now you could, of course, make more like this, maybe some that are steeper and um, create more like cliff faces or uh, whatever. And you could just... You can go to town with it, but you can see this turns out to work out very well, very fast. And you can hold control. And if you do that, you'll notice that sometimes it does work in the same direction, but a lot of times you'll have to reverse direction and do it the opposite. So it'll be like this. Uh, potentially, it's a little off center, so it's a little weird to work with, but um, and that would be more realistic for a draw. Okay. So spurs are the ones that stick out, and draws are the ones that would have like the water running down the side of the face, right? where all the erosion would go and you can get kind of carried away with these things sometimes and so like you could crank up the uh you know the uh strength there and just go and do something like that if you really wanted to uh, but the reason you can get away with this is that fill tool uh, a lot of times like when a mountain erodes it carries sediment down the side this would be like sand little rocks things like that um, it would carry it down and do things like that potentially. And that's why you would want to fill in little areas like that also. Um, but you can you can get these things kind of going rather quickly like this, right? Fill it in. So it takes a little bit of back and forth and practice and all kinds of fun stuff. Uh, but it's not impossible. And that's the main thing. Now, do you actually need to do this? More than likely you sculpt in terrain, you you really don't. You have other options available to you such as um, terrain generators these things work out really well and uh, just the default scene here in the world machine you get an idea um, it's using procedural techniques but the erosion already looks pretty good but you can kind of see what it does here is it's got little rocky areas down here that kind of almost like a noise but then the uh, the peaks here end up being uh, not really anything too crazy it's just almost like a noise pattern and so you can see we're almost replicating that already and it's we're, we're getting there at least so uh, let's go ahead and go back to the regular tool i don't know why that disappeared but anyways um, let's see what else we got i forgot what i made okay so this one the reason why i was showing the, how simple you can make things is because look when you want those little uh, effects like this over here on the sides you make really simple little strips and uh, you can go through and you can uh, make basically those little effects like that. You see, it's really, there's a little bit of a, a, a craft to this, right? Like when you're creating those alphas, um, it's very, very like fundamental in nature on the types of shapes and patterns and designs you're creating. And even though we created just, you know, one of this, it would be oftentimes advisable to just use uh, or make multiples. So that way you can change things up and you don't have to worry about it so much. Uh, but you see, we can make, you don't want to cross the symmetry there, but we can do numbers like that perhaps. It's a little strong, I think, but uh, you know, we can go kind of crazy if we do it a little lighter. We could push it in and out and smooth it a little. Uh, yeah, we could really spend some time detailing uh, these little areas. And so this is just kind of like the first step in the whole process as well. Uh, what you could do potentially is just, model like a ridge section that's completely on a flat surface. And you can use the grab dock add-on to uh, set up a scene so you can render out another alpha from the one you sculpted. So you can get detailed alphas going as well, not just 1024s, but maybe like a 2048 or even uh, 4096 doesn't work out too well in Blender in my opinion, but uh, 2048 at least. And so you can start laying out whole mountain ranges after you do a couple little like uh, ridges or hilltops or whatever the case may be. Uh, spend enough time sufficiently creating those areas and you'll be all right with it. Uh, we'll go back to tool over here. 
I think so we don't have to keep going up to whatever up there. So this is this is like where the the true power of um setting up uh, your own system to create terrain really comes into play. Now when it comes to texturing something like this, you can do it in substance designer or substance painter. It's really you can get some pretty decent results like this. It's good for like distant terrain slices, I would say. Um, when you bake this to like a, a lower poly model and you just throw it in the background, that's one thing. Um, but if you're doing like detailed sections where like a player could go or a character or whatever, you're not going to do this in this nature. Instead, you're going to do little sections of cliffs and rocks and um, sculpt those out potentially, texture them. Uh, I know in CryEngine, you can blend models into the terrain. So and most game engines can do something similar to that. But the the thing is, is that you need to, um, you still need to model the, the stuff first and, and get everything working the way you want it. And make sure it's going to work out for you. So you can also just hit negative up here if you don't want to hold control every time. I'll t oftentimes do that because it's annoying otherwise. And so. Yeah, we just go around and add some interest. And you can see how fast this is, you know, terrain generators might be almost instantaneous, but we have complete control over this. It's just something kind of relaxing. Well, mostly complete control. You you still want to have things happen kind of by accident and um, just let it naturally occur. I think that's the, probably the best thing you can do sometimes because terrain in nature, at least, it does have, although it's um, kind of uniform in a way, like in a fractal way, it's very kind of uniform in, in that sense, but in reality, it's just little details here or there that just, you know, you really couldn't predict perhaps, um, you know, nature does its own thing. So uh, we're going to do a fill. I'm going to fill the bases of these a little bit. So yeah, we don't have to like smooth them out or anything. We can just kind of fill in these areas at the bottoms. You can see we get some like sediments going. All right. And so let's go ahead and switch on over to I already know this one's going to be a nightmare to use. I just have a feeling it's not very blurry, but you can see how that works out. It's kind of interesting, right? It's actually not too bad. I thought it would be worse, but like if you wanted to do like this little idea of like um, weathering in these areas, you could do something like this. Like news is just sediment uh, built up on the edges here a little bit in the middle. And then you use that fill tool, or you could try to smooth it and maybe uh, pick where you want this to take effect most, the fill, anyways. Yeah, so you can finesse this all together at that point and get some really interesting results. You'll see we need to shade this smooth as well. So it's going to start to look a little bit better like that. And uh, cliffs and things like that, that's why we made that other one, because we need maybe to do cliff rock on the sides of things a little bit. Now, because we're only working up and down, it's gonna be kind of challenging and hard to do this in these areas, but you can see what would potentially happen is you can uh, work these kind of areas like this with this one. And you can see it, it kind of accentuates what's already going on there. And you might have to adjust that strength just to get it just right, but probably less is more, generally speaking, but you can create the effect of cliff rocks relatively fast. Um, it'd probably be better if we made this a little bit different so it's not so abrupt when it starts and stop, but um, you certainly could use it potentially. You can see it's weak when it's more vertical, but it's strong when it's less vertical, right? And so uh, there you go with that. Now you can also try um, using it weak, just laying it in uh, rather rapidly and fast. It's gonna give kind of a little texture to it. Right, and uh, maybe a little stronger than that. Smooth that. And hold control sometimes because we're pushing in, and now we're pushing out. Okay, so we can do things like that. You can see that one got a little bit sideways. We can smooth it a bit, um, but we can also maybe use it in the opposite direction to create kind of that stepping effect. Um, this is a possibility. Don't forget, you can work one way, but you can also work back the other way as well. I want these to be positive. I keep using it negative. Uh, but we can do things like that if we had to. Uh, probably better to do it less strength and more purposefully, like something like this, where you create like a little line that goes out. Um, usually terrain doesn't shift a whole, whole lot. 
Um, usually when it has the different layers of it, it might kind of slope in one direction, but sometimes in really crazy areas, that, that line might go like down and then back up because it has like a bunch of tectonic activity and stuff like that, or it has in the past at least. And so it's kind of interesting how that works out. Definitely look at your references. You'll see some cool stuff and uh, just see how it all kind of goes together, how the wear happens or like um, sandstone caps might exist on certain like desert ones and things like that. So, uh, but yeah, we can go through this whole process and really work this thing. And yeah, we're off to a good start at least, you know, you can start to see it coming out and being a thing, right? I want to go ahead and uh, just add some more interest to this area real quick. Of course, that's for the thumbnail of the video, right? Uh, take a screenshot of this area, maybe. And don't turn on shadows. I know it's tempting while you're sculpting. You turn on shadows. This one needs to be used negative. Um, it's really tempting to turn on those shadows. Just don't do it. It doubles the um, the render, I guess. Uh, and so your performance goes down pretty substantially. And what I'm talking about is shadows up here. Don't do this. Okay, I'm saying don't do it, so you'll do it. Just kidding. Um, it actually causes this to like render twice or something like that. So if you're doing a heavy terrain, it's going to really slow you down. Uh, but it does give you a little bit of an idea of like where shadow might be coming from or whatever. Uh, but I don't have any ridge on. These also help accentuate like what's going on with the terrain. Um, so it can kind of give you a better idea like what your textures are starting to look like and whatnot. And this is still very low res, but it's... Uh, Definitely can go up in poly or uh, base count. So a million is, you know, just barely cutting it, in my opinion. You need to go up to at least, uh, it depends. Uh, it depends on how close you get to this thing. If it's really in far in the distance, then this might be fine. You just do a couple slices like this and stick them next to each other or something. Uh, but let's talk about taking something like this into um, Unreal Engine 5 with Nanite. And are you going to sculpt everything? Possibly. Uh, I would say this, if you have a chance to use a terrain generator to create alphas, it helps. Um, but also using scan data or like satellite image data um, to create alphas is also possible. You can use GrabDoc and try to uh, get that data imported into Blender. You can render it out. Uh, but this is just not a, first of all, very detailed. But when you're doing uh, models for game engines, like especially like if you're doing terrain slices, you can kind of do this first to kind of figure out what you might need or, or want out of a terrain perhaps, uh, but then try to isolate little sections. Like you might want, for example, like um, a concave shape where this is like a cliff, like slice, something like this, but you also might want a, um, a convex one, which is kind of the opposite of that, where it goes in the other way, right? And then you might want like a corner that does something like this. Or you might want just like a little draw section that comes out. So there's all kinds of different ways you can slice up a terrain and try to intersect them to make them more interesting. And then, of course, you know, these kinds of areas like that, you might little, use like basically plain slices and then have like a little rock, a uh, bunch of gra uh, stuff you can uh, intersect with it as another little slice that just you combine the two together. Things like that. You'll see that um, kind of used commonly uh, in UE5 anyways. So. Uh, you can sculpt all those things, but let's say you start with something like this. You're not sure what you want or need. Um, you can say like, well, this would probably make a good um, concave section, right? So we can use the mask tool. And when we use this mask tool, we can grab this area real quick. Okay, so this might be a good concave section, and then this might be a good convex section. Who knows? Uh, but we could just mask it out real quick. Hold control, you can erase some of the mask. Okay. And we can work this into a, a chunk of terrain if we wanted to. All right, so we can take it up in resolution. Say over here, uh, the mask drop down. We could do a mask extract, right? And now we can extract it as solid. It'll add a solidify modifier to it. If you leave that turned off, it won't add a solidify modifier. So it depends on if you want it to stay solid or not. We're going to leave it as solid for just now. Click OK. We're going to see the result we get here. Oops, I missed a spot apparently. Let's get that in there too. 
Okay, yeah, don't miss a spot. We'll extract it. You'll see it's um, a new piece now, and it doesn't erase the original either. So you can just take the original, press H, hide it real quick, and you'll see it's all solidified as such like this. Now, I don't personally care for using the solidify like that, um, but it does add a modifier to do it. So you could potentially increase the thickness, but you see where we get an issue. Um, instead, you're better off working this out with um, polygons, like extruding it, uh, refilling it on the backside perhaps, and then um, also running it through something maybe like quad remesher or just a regular remesher as you're sculpting it and uh, do whatever you got to do. But when you extract it, take note, it should have done it. Yeah, it did. Um, it actually converts the edges into quads. It's a quad strip all the way around, which is kind of interesting. And even the little pieces in here are all quads, which is uh, pretty impressive. I'm not going to lie. I think that's pretty, pretty good that they're able to do that. So that means this whole mesh right now, uh, it's perfectly squared up for the most part. And it means you can add a multi-res to it. So you can do multi-res subdivision and uh, go ahead and start subdividing this thing and sculpting on it to a higher, higher level. You can see we're back at the same face count now for just this one slice as we had for the whole thing. We'll get more resolution out of this by far. And we could take it up even higher and um, go back to our sculpt tools, go back to the alpha section. And uh, so we can keep putting these um, these alphas to work and trying to make them do what we want them to do. You'll see that your alphas at this point are probably going to be pretty rough, though. They, they don't do uh, this section as well, perhaps. And you'll definitely want to create some detailing alphas that um, go a little bit further because I'm trying to find the one we were using for the rock face. Where is it? <laughs> Was it three, four, something? I don't know. I think I might have replaced it by accident. It was one of these. And yeah, you see that one just showed up twice, maybe. All right, we'll try using this one for a second. Yeah, so we got a lot more resolution now, but you don't want to get too carried away with this either. Even though you got more resolution to work with, you can overdo things very quickly. So yeah, just be a little bit careful. And I'm thinking seven or six or one of these was the one that, Maybe oh, it was four. No, it's still there. I don't know. Maybe it just reloaded or something. Or maybe I just didn't see it. I mean, that's always a possibility. So you can see we can still use the rocks for this, but if we use them a little bit heavier, like it could be a good jumping off point, perhaps. Like it's really not that bad. But um, you definitely want to spend some time. Like it doesn't work backwards actually that well. So you definitely want to spend some time, uh, you know, laying these things in here, trying them in different directions, maybe going up with it instead of down. And maybe not laying these ones on top of each other, even because they seem like they're having a little issue with that. Um, maybe using them lower strength. So let's do this one this way. Okay. Yeah, and you you might want to make some more like cracked sections and whatnot. I'm gonna use that lower strength in here. All right. So this is this is where you're gonna spend a lot of time if you go to this level of detail. It's gonna take you a bit. You can see it's kind of weird in there. I'm not going to do it right there. So uh, now all of this, yeah, this is going to push push you to the limits. Now you're going to have to do a lot of this maybe by hand just to get some variants going. Uh, but you can certainly create new alphas as well. That might help in the process here. Uh, but you can see, yeah, this is where uh, scan data and stuff just really accelerates over doing things by hand manually. This is a lot of little detail you got to think about, little cracks and crevices and hang, hang uh, like little hangover things and um, just different angles as well. Because this isn't super realistic right now. You might have to actually go back and sculpt each one of these a little bit. That would be a little bit of a problem. So sculpting some just individual sections, turning them into alphas would maybe be beneficial. But just like we did the big pieces there, uh, you could, you know, pull this out rather rapidly, perhaps uh, leave a little area that's, you know, a little bit more flat and then um, maybe pushing in up here. And so doing some little sections like this and then turning them into the alphas, uh, you know, you do it by itself on a flat plane first. Use a grab dock to turn it into an alpha. And then um, you could use that alpha later on to help kind of speed this section up at least. But at least it'll have the detail you need in it. And that's the main point. Uh, because you might have to do a lot of stuff here. 
including like gravel and just weird weird stuff could get really involved in here. And so I would probably kind of sketch it personally. Just sketch it out with the draw sharp tool for a bit. Let's see if I can't get something kind of making sense here. As far as where I'm going to like dig out little sections or have some erosion. I would definitely use references at this point. Uh, some good references you would want to look into or check it out. Um, the free climbers, when they're out there climbing on the rocks, um, they they get the best views of just terrain up close and personal, right? Um, and it's fun to watch, too, at the same time. So we'll take a couple screen grabs of people clamoring against the rock faces and all that. You get a better idea of how these things are actually put together, at least. Sometimes they do have, like, little... Uh, they, they literally look like a rock wall sometimes, like little climbing rock walls, those little gym ones. Uh, you can see, like, they have, like, little sections just kind of doing stuff like that, maybe. Yeah, it might be just, like, a little nonsense hanging out there, you know? See, you'll see that kind of stuff quite a bit. And so, uh, yeah, have fun with it. I'm not going to do this whole piece right now in this video anyways, but uh, it's definitely a jumping off point. You, I think you could take it the rest of the way. And if um hit old H, you can bring that back out, and you can see how that works out there. Uh, it's kind of intersecting with it. But um, ultimately, yeah, you could start sculpting your own terrain and going crazy and just really figuring out what you want out of it and, um, you know, make things happen for, for that terrain. Also, if you ever do this by accident, you might add like a, you might be using a remesh or a subdivision surface. And when you go into sculpt mode, you might accidentally um, hit control one or control two or something. It'll add a multi-res on top of this. When you save your blender file, it won't open again. All right. If that ever happens to you, um, start a new blender file and then append, you know, just file append and bring in that, that, um, the terrain that you're working on. You can also bring in the brushes you are working with, you can append brushes and, um, get rid of that, the modifier stack in that manner, only keep the ones you absolutely wanted or needed and then resave it and you'll have um, a working blender file again. Okay. So just keep that in mind. You can run into that error. Uh, it happens, and it's going to be really frustrating if it does. So, anyways, um, yeah, so that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed checking this one out and learned a little bit about, you know, just playing around with terrain and sculpting it. And I hope you have some fun, all right? Check you out in the next one. Take care.